We have an interesting request. Oop. Come on, Clary, get your act together. Here we go. That's a college graduate, for God's sake. Jesus Christ, start acting like it. Okay. Danny, my name. There. <laughs> Modern day college graduate. Anyway, got a video request. If you have a video request that you would like my opinion or take or whatever on what you should do and how you should think and where are we going, who are we really and what were we before, what did you do and what did you think, Let's see if you can find out what movie that's from, go to assholeconsulting.com and I'll take care of you. Aaron, you appreciate brevity so I'll make this short. I visited the DMV today and the clerk was literally the rudest person I have interacted with in years. If a man on the street talked to me this way, this very unfortunate looking middle-aged government worker spoke to me, it would have taken every atom of my self-restraint not to get physical. Once this woman was sure that she had annoyed me with her obnoxious condensation, she smirked with glee. She made sure not to let me pass until I was thoroughly pissed. These people live to make others miserable. Anyway, I'm not going to ask why government workers, DMV employees, parking sticker people, public school teachers tend to be such losers. We all know the answer to this question, no competition. I just want a nice, solid, cappy video rant about the worst experiences you've had with someone of these government worker goblins, or at least elaborate on this very short article about a study done on DMV workers and why so many of them are piles of horseshit masquerading as humans. As mentioned, I'd like a video response. Thanks, bro, and I'll keep them anonymous. Um, <clears throat> the truth is I've had pretty much, I had a little, like, really think about it, because I must be lucky, because I have not had any memorably bad experiences with uh, the DMV. I mean, there's lines, of course. Um, that's government bureaucracy and inefficiency. But no one's ever been rude to me, except for one guy. One guy at the Postal Service. And I I walked in, and I was going to pay for something. And I don't sign the back of my credit card. And the reason I don't sign it is because that way, what was it? There's like a legal thing where then it's not your responsibility if someone, like someone should look for the signature of the back. That's what it was. It's a safety thing where they have to get ID, like, well, who's the signature on the thing? So they did um, so the, the guy, I was paying for it at the postal service and postage. The guy says, okay, I see the ID. And I said, sure. You know, and I'm like, good. So he's asking for ID. So he's doing his job that way. He says, what does it say here on the credit card? I'm like, what? He says, what does it say on this credit card? And I look at the credit card. It says sign here. It says, yeah, it says you should sign there. And I want to like grab the thing and say, fuck you. I'm not paying for me. Get me somebody else. Um, but I didn't because I was in too much of a rush. And the the article, and I thought, that ah, he's just an asshole, and I didn't think much more of it than that. Well, they did a study, and this is the article our, our um, client uh, linked to, and it's titled, uh, Power Without Status Makes People Mean. It's very interesting. Why are pencil pusher bureaucrats, like, for example, DMV workers, are often so mean? Research is led by Nathaniel J. Fast. Sounds like a cool name. Nathaniel J. Fast. Hey, attorney at law. At Stanford Graduate School of Business has the answer. A new study shows why interactions with DMV employees and other clerical workers can be so fraught and why it could feel like they are picking on people who just want to register a car. The research titled The Destructive Nature of Power Without Status concludes that people in positions with power below social status often use their authority to demean others. The lesson is not just that power corrupts, but that putting people in demeaning roles leads them to demean others. In other words, it's a real-life reminder of the trope that misery loves company. Um, so then they go through some details about the study, and they kind of say, well, it's kind of somewhat conclusive, blah, blah, blah. Here's what the old cat thinks. I can't get ranty about it, because I, I, it's not like, I, I, it really hasn't happened to me viscerally. I can't say it. <clears throat> People who work at, at government, you have to understand, it's a big affirmative action hiring thing. And I'm not talking affirmative action in terms of minorities and women. I'm talking about people in general. If you work in government, you're kind of on the short bus. The government employees are the short bus of the real world. Private sector, they got all these questions and all these tests, da 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 And government, and it's not unknown. This is not unknown. Politicians use the government to get votes and to hand out jobs. And they make make work jobs. So I'm not saying if you work for a government, you're a complete moron. I'm saying there's a statistical higher chance. Now, this can also happen in the private sector where you have a demeaning role. So I don't just, I'm just using the government sector as kind of a filter to see this more commonly in the postal service or the DMV. But in general, uh, people who do not perform, people who are lazy, are given low status in society. Unless they come from rich parents, in which the case you run for president of the United States and you make it, like Bush and Obama. But for the rest of the population, the vast majority of people, you more or less end up where you are in terms of ability and hard work and ethic, uh, work ethic. And most people who are selfish, self-serving, greedy, lazy, slobby, whatever, 
end up working shitty jobs. And they are unsatisfied with their lot in life. They believe they're uh, bad luck, discriminated against, sexism, bigotry, racism, whatever. It's never their own fault or that they fucked up their lives and they never did anything. So for the most part, their lives are miserable. Now, they don't have money. Uh, and even if they are reasonably well paid or overpaid as government employees, they have usually made such spectacular decisions that they've ruined their finances and all that money goes to debt or child support or babies they can't afford, whatever. So the only thing they get in their lives is this little bit of power over other people in their little fiefdom there. And that's what you see. I'm sure not, and, and you kind of opened my eyes a little bit to it, like I never gave it much thought, but here's this guy, uh, he looked like a douche, he looked you know, kind of sloppy, and, uh, you know, he was older than me, he was 50, and he's working as a, as a uh, postal service, as a, a, a checkout clerk, obviously, and nothing wrong with that, I know there's many middle-aged people or older people who work out as clerks, but you ain't the fucking CEO of uh, Microsoft, okay? So, this guy obviously made bad decisions, or just production and wealth and income and career was not his concern, and more likely, he probably fucked up his life, and now this is the, probably one of the few jobs he could get. Of course he's going to fucking lord over me that I didn't read the fucking thing. He gets his jollies off on that. He's like, hey, hey, hey. I mean, that's, that's what these people... But here's... Try not to get riled. Try not to get upset. The next time you do it, there's one of two things you could do. You get their, empl their, their boss in. And then in front of, And then you got to remind them of their s status in life. That's all you got to do. This pisses off people way more than you could ever imagine. Say, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go home and I'm going to do whatever it is that you do. That's better than their life. And I'm going to be happy I don't have fucking kids. I'm going to be happy that I don't have to come in for a 9 to 5 job. Well, you, this is you. This is you. You're all, How old are you? are almost like 55, 60. You're like 80% dead, 20% of your life left. You're still working here, huh? Look at that. Look at you. So you could get all power trippy over me and hopefully you can go masturbate to that later on tonight. But in the end... You've pissed away your life, your life sucks, and you're too damn lazy to do anything about it. And in the end, my life is infinitely better than yours. So you sit and think about that there as you go and, ooh, hold up the line and make people fill out things in triplicate. You know, and that, just pointing out the truth will piss them off, and then you also want to get them in trouble with their boss. Say, I'm not going to tolerate this shit. And if you don't do something about it, I'm going to go to your boss. But, you know, the larger takeaway is to realize how sad and pathetic you have to be to be low level and then power trip over people. That, it's sad, man. It's sad. I, I, there's, the back recesses of my mind are kind of coming up with another one like, uh, oh, this one guy I worked, when I was working security, this guy, just a douche, had a mullet, had this mustache, just a, just a, a redneck hick douche. And I think he was like 25 at the time, I was 23, and I was working this shitty ass security job. I had like paid seven fifty an hour. And he's coming in, lecturing me about my hair and this and that, and I really ought to be more professional because I had a skater cut. Meanwhile, he's got like this freaking Hitler stash going on with a mullet. Well, and that was him. That was his big thing. He was power tripping over that. Well, it turns out he never had his license, and this idiot tried to pull somebody over with the security car that had little fake yellow cherries, not even red cherries, but had the yellow cherries. Well, a cop, a real cop, not a fake cop, a real cop pulled over, found out he was impersonating an officer and didn't have his license. But they got a power trip, man. They got a power trip. But they're losing. Now, that guy's life is fucked. I, think, I mean, this is over 20 years ago. Or not. It was like 18 years ago. This guy's life is fucked. I can't wait to see what he's doing now. So just think about their lives. And if you want vengeance, tell them about their lives. And then walk away. And keep your eye on your back, though. They're, you, they're not terribly bright. They may just jump that thing. But then, then if they attack you, then you can take them out. So anyway, try not to let them get under your skin. But get under theirs. Toodles.